Hey everybody, welcome to the first Friday patron hangout and q and uh, I hope everybody's doing good today. So first Friday of September already. I can't believe uh, this year seems like it's dragging, but at the same time, it's kind of going pretty quick. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a weird time thing this year. So anyway, today what I wanted to do for the demo, uh, and I want to make sure everybody understands what, this is not going to be like a how-to, <laughs> like I don't really know what I'm doing. This is more of kind of an exploration into making patterns in resin. And you know, a lot of uh, what I do, I make pen blanks and you know, you can get some patterning uh, depending on how you pour the resin and a lot of times, you know, I'll just take a, a, a stir stick and kind of, you know, put a little bit of a swirl in there after I've poured. Um, it, but going off of that idea, I, 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 many of you might be uh, familiar with the Juma pen blanks that look kind of like snakeskin. And I picked this up actually from Turner's Warehouse. Um, I didn't really want, <laughs> I'm not trying to rip off the Juma blanks. What happened was... When I made the, the matrix blanks the first time using this mesh, the perforated mesh, what I would do is I would stick it down in the resin and I would notice that not only would you get kind of that perforated, you know, the, the, the actual perforated paper look in the blanks, the mesh, but you would also get these trails of resin that looked like the mesh. And it got me thinking, you know, and I was aware of the, the Juma blanks, I was thinking, you know, I bet there's a way to you know, actually put uh, you know patterns in the resin, and I, I have no clue how these Juma blanks are made. It's probably not you know like resin casting like we do, but I was thinking let's try and play around with some different stuff. So I got a I got a loofah sponge, uh, and I want to make clear this is not putting a loofah sponge in resin and leaving it there like Duncan junk. This is going to be using a material, a mesh, a pattern. Uh, and, and then actually kind of trying to pull it up through the resin to create patterns. And so similar to how you have to do it with, you know, uh, keeping your colors separated, you're going to have to wait till the end of the, the, the working period. Then you kind of pour it and, and, and put your swirls in. Um, I think this might require, I've done a little bit of practicing with this. I actually kind of made some blanks. Uh, this was actually a while ago that I made these. I'm going to switch camera views just to make sure I can, I, I know what I'm, showing you guys and you guys got a good view of it. Um, so I've made a few things where I kind of got some patterns. Now it's obviously, like I said, I, I'm really not trying to completely, <laughs> I, I, I admit that this was, I wanted to kind of see similar colors to the Juma blank, but I'm really not trying to exactly rip them off or anything. But um, I did do something and I got some patterning in this. Um, and I used something that kind of had some bigger perforated holes in it. For those, I got some kind of smaller, this is getting kind of close to the snake skin, but it's, it's a little bit different, uh, slightly different patterns. Um, for, the, for the big ones, I used kind of a bigger perforated, I don't have the stuff or I lost it. Uh, it, it, was, it was actually what they cut sequins out of. <laughs> so like the like blingy things on dresses. Um, so it was kind of a wide sheet and it just had a bunch of holes in it. And so you got some kind of bigger kind of patterning in that. This was actually a screen, like from a screen window, a door, screen door. That's what I pulled through. Now I have tried, the last couple days I've been trying to do a little bit of testing on this. And I gotta be honest, I actually haven't gotten good results at all the last couple days. And I, I used some loofah uh, and I think something else. And, and I didn't really get any good results. So this is gonna be, like I said, this is not gonna be like how to get amazing you know, pattern results in your blanks. It's gonna be kind of let's explore uh, kind of together, uh, you know, do some tests and see what we can come up with. I'll, I'll share what's in my brain, some of the thoughts that I've had on how you can do this. Uh, and then what I'm hoping, that, like the idea is, Hopefully this may give you, you know, some ideas to expand on. You know, maybe you have some sort of material that you know of that you want to try out and see if you can get some patterns. Uh, but I thought I'd be the guinea pig. Let's do a little bit of testing with this and uh, have a little bit of fun with it. So let's see here. I guess first off, what, let, let's kind of go through how, what, how I've done this so far. And... Like I said, I am I am I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have any, you know, brilliant plan that that is like guaranteed to get you awesome results with this. So far what I've done is I've I've used trays, you know, like a block mold. And basically, I stick the material down in, pour the resin on and then kind of try to carefully pull it through. That's how I've done it. Or in the case of these matrix, you know, when I make the matrix blanks and most of you guys probably have seen the video. So this is 
that perforated, um, what do they call this stuff? Does it say here? One way perforated vinyl. Um, and this is like what they print. Um, you see cars that have like printed ads in the window. That's what this stuff is. Um, it's on a roll. Let me, let me get this, like a, a strip out so I can kind of show you guys a little bit better, but it's on this backing strip and it just has a bunch of holes in it. So it's just, you know, a perforated, hopefully you can kind of see through that, like a screen, like a mesh. Um, and with those, what I've done is actually pushed it down into the resin, uh, from the top. And I've gotten really good results doing that. And I think that's that, that way, um, I think I can get that result pretty easily, like repeatedly. Um, what I was doing, the couple tests that I did the last couple days, and I actually have the blanks. I should probably go get those and show you. They, they just aren't very amazing. There's no patterning. And I'm not entirely certain what the deal is with that. I used, I want to say I used loofah on both. This is just one of those like shower loofah things. Um, and one of the things that I'm thinking of is this stuff is really flimsy. Like it doesn't really hold that well. And I, what I'm worried about is when you pull it through, I, I think what you need is something that's a little bit more rigid um, that, that will kind of hold its shape as you pull it through. So we got a couple different things here. Uh, this is like Gretchen got this stuff. It's kind of the same thing as loofah, but it seems a little bit more kind of rigid. I'm going to cut, cut down the, the side of this thing and use this first um, because I'm, I kind of want to, you know, I do want to try and get this kind of snakeskin pattern. I, I, what I, why I'm using that blank, it's something that's already, you know, the Juma blanks already are in existence. And I want to try and see if I can mimic that snakeskin pattern just to, it's more of a, you know, how do you get a certain pattern thing? A lot more than just trying to copy these things. It's not, that's not really why I'm doing it. I'm just trying to, I have a result in mind and I want to see if I can, you know, get that result. Um, so um, we're going to use this stuff. Uh, again, I'm going to cut it down. And then I'm just going to, you know, stick the, the, the stuff down in there, just one sheet of it, have enough to where I can kind of pull it up through. But this is kind of the key that I, I think, <laughs> this is where we're going to get into, you know, you want to wait till the end of the working time. I think we're going to be pushing the, the limits of the end of the working time. Like it's going to be so close that it may fail because like getting into the pressure pot, it may be too late. I want to really push the limits. I think that it really needs to be goopy, sticky, you know, like where you're just kind of, I don't know, sucking through that stuff. So let's give that a shot first. Um, since Dominic was here first, um, what, what I'm going to do is just one color. Uh, I'm going to, again, I'm, I'm just using this, this blank. It's in existence and I'm going to kind of use it as, as like an example. Let's just go with one color. I'm going to let Dom pick because he was here earliest and, and saying, hey, where you at? Um, so let's let Dom pick the first color. Um, and I, I don't know, uh, you know, this is one of those things that I have no clue what I'm doing. Like this is totally up for grabs, like open for any kind of thing. Um, I would imagine that pearl colors probably are going to look better than just like dyes. I don't know. I'm just not sure that like something like a, an opaque dye, uh, will work as well. So, so, so far I've been using kind of pearly colors. But I got to be honest, I have no clue if <laughs> which way, you know, what's going to work or what's not. So um, let's let's have Dom pick a color and, and kind of similar to normal fashion. Let's just see what happens. You know, a lot of times it's easier to have someone just pick a color and then I try to do the thing and we just see what we get. So let's do it that way and see. Let's see. Quarter inch hardware cloth. Yeah. And I, I also thought that this would be good to, to share with people. You know, like I'm sitting in, in my shop and I'm, I have access to certain materials, certain things that I know of. Um, and, and I do things a certain way with casting. Um, I'm actually, you know, this is for one, one of the reasons I want to do this is to kind of give you guys an idea to maybe run with, but also we can also, someone else may know the, the secret to this, <laughs> you know, or come up with a good idea. So paradise blue. All right. Paradise blue. That's a good color. We got our, our paradise blue here from caster's choice. I'm going to go get those blanks. I actually, I kind of, I was really disappointed with them and I actually just tossed them in the discount blank thing. Uh, <laughs> I, I send, um, I send blanks to Turner's warehouse. They sell some of my blanks that are like seconds. Like I, they wouldn't, I wouldn't want to sell them in my store where either I was testing stuff or 
the color, I, I screwed up the color. So like they're perfectly good blanks, but they're, that's a good way to get some pretty decent blanks. Um, but these, so let me, let me switch to this view. I'll just show you guys what, what happened. It just, it wasn't, it was like, meh, <laughs> you know? So like I said, in the past, this is what I've gotten where you can really see patterns. I mean, there's, there's, you know, and so <laughs> I don't know what I did. And this is, this also really stresses the idea of really try to take really good notes. I don't know if I did something secretive or, <laughs> you know, brilliant. Um, but this is what I got this time. And there's, there's really no patterning. I mean, they're just kind of meh. I pushed the resin around. And so what I'm thinking is I just didn't really wait long enough, even though, I mean, this stuff was like boiling hot, but I think I had even more time to, uh, to try it out, but you can see it moved it around. They're not bad blanks in any way, but they're just, they're not something that I want to sell necessarily, you know, um, they just didn't do it for me. You know what I mean, guys? They just didn't do it for me. So they're going in that box for Chad. So we got paradise blue. I already have a couple of these molds and I'm just going to be using the three blank mold. Um, you know, this is another thing. Um, Another thought that I had, this is probably a case where if you could pull it through a longer, you know, type of thing, you know, we're only pulling maybe about an inch uh, through this and, and we can maybe do it this way. I, I'm trying to think about, you know, I'm going to cut the pen blanks out and you kind of want it oriented where it needs to either be going sideways or up on, on, a, on a flat pen blank thing like this. And even if we were using a tube, you really kind of would want it to go sideways, I think. So I don't know, but you would probably be trailing a lot more resin if you had a longer way to pull it, a longer distance to pull it. So I don't know, I'm just throwing thoughts out. We're just winging it and spitballing here. Use the mesh from your ball cap, no. Not using the mesh for my ball. This is my, I actually, I really like this, this hat. This is really flimsy stuff and it's kind of, it's not like a, a, a hole anyway, but I really like these hats. I'm, I'm digging this one. Can't have my hat. No way. No way. I'm not sure what quarter inch, I don't know what hardware cloth is for birdhouses. Um, like hardware cloth, like like chicken fencing stuff. Cause I have some of this stuff too. The thing is you kind of want sort of small, you know, I, I, I think that you would really want some pretty small holes. Um, the whole size for these ones that I made, what I want to say, you know, they were like sequins and I, I really, I have no clue what I did with that stuff, but I, I really kind of wanted a smaller hole. And then this stuff, was like, like a screen, like a, you know, like literally like on a screen door and it was too small. So you want something like, this is exactly the size that I want, I think. But I, the thing is, you know, the flimsiness of it. So I don't know. So I would actually say eighth inch is probably the number. If we were going for a number of something, eighth inch kind of diamond pattern. I was actually seriously considering buying, um, uh, what are those things called? like the lingerie stuff that <laughs> I can't think of the name of it. The fishnet stockings, like women's fishnet um, pantyhose stuff. <laughs> I, was, I was seriously considering it. That might actually work. I don't know. That might be pretty flimsy too, though. This is a little bit more rigid than the, the and Gretchen got this. It was like, it had like garlic or something in it, you know? So I really wish this was a little bit longer, but I'm just gonna kind of keep one side of this. Let's see. I think what we'll do is we'll just kind of drip it down in. I'll try and hold it somehow. Maybe I'm gonna, maybe I will, hold on a minute. Thinking about putting little pull tabs on here. Yeah, we're gonna put pull tabs on that. We're gonna use a little bit of tape That way I can hold it because you want to, you want to be able to hold the thing too. So I'm just going to, this is just some tape that I got, some packing tape. I'm just gonna, oh, that's not going to really work too well. I'm going to cover up all my, my things. So I'm putting it just, there's about a half inch of it on the end. And I, I, I don't know how well this is actually going to hold on, but 
at least in the beginning, I'll, I'll have something kind of sticking out that I can grab onto. You guys see what I'm doing? Yeah. So I'm just kind of do it like this. Kind of have a little something to grab onto. There we go. And, and I'm thinking that, you know, you really want to have this thing pretty far, like at the bottom, because in the end, what we're going to do is kind of pull this up out. And one of the problems you have is it's going to be covered in resin. So it's going to be a messy thing and it may be kind of a one, one use type deal unless you want to have a, a vat of denatured alcohol or acetone or something sitting there and wash them every time. Not really what I have in mind. Um, so the, the loofah, that's why these things are pretty cheap. And, and if you just cut it, we'd have a lot of material. But like I said, I've used this twice now and I wasn't really super thrilled with it. So you just cut that kind of thing that's holding it. And you get quite a bit of material. And I, realistically, I think this loofah is made out of HDPE or LDPE, one of the two which I think is exactly the same thing as these little baskets. It's just, it's a little bit sturdier, the other one, the red one. All right, so you got a ton of this stuff, <laughs> right? That's why I was thinking, if, if maybe if you can find kind of a more rigid loofah, it might work pretty well. So we'll, we'll try both of these things. It's a pretty thin material also. You know, this is, there's not a lot to this material. It's very thin. This stuff seems a little bit, a little bit more to it. So we'll start with that. Okay, so let's pull our notebook out and we'll start writing some notes here. Um, one thing, this is, this is so, you know, I, I always mention the notebook thing and I kind of didn't really take excellent notes. I did this like a year ago. Um, that's, that's when I did these, these ones that turned out reasonable. Um, but I didn't really take excellent notes. This is actually a time where, you know, most of us all have a smartphone and to be honest, you know, put it on a tripod and actually just videotape it. If it's a super important thing where, where there's going to be a lot of details that are going to kind of not be very easy to write out, um, just videotape yourself, you know, um, and, and you can talk to the camera about notes. You can try and get, you know, shots, but, um, just set it up to where you can kind of see what you're doing but you don't really have to worry about it, you know? Um, that can help. So I've actually turned on the stream cameras a, a few times just for the heck of it, <laughs> just because it's something that I don't want to write uh, notes down about. Okay, so we got our pen. So let's see, today's date is 9-4, man. Four days into September already. We're doing patterns in resin. So number one, we'll do a couple of these. Um, we'll try, let's just try this, this, this metal stuff. I don't, I don't know. Maybe let's, I, I, I take it back. We'll, we'll do a loofah as well. We'll do a, a loofah. We'll do this stuff in a loofah and then we'll just kind of go on from there. So we'll have to wait to see how they turn out. But so this stuff is just the red diamond pattern. I don't know red mesh. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to mix up 300 grams. That's 150 times two. And then we're going to add, I don't know, like three quarter teaspoon. It might be a little bit much, but let's put three quarter teaspoon of the paradise blue. And let's add one drop of ocean blue dye. Sometimes when you add a little bit of dye in with, um, the pearls, you can get some kind of weird, a little, slightly different thing going on. So let's let's try that out as well. Just one drop. One drop will do you. Okay, so let's get our cup out. Zeroing out the scale. I'm going to switch to this work area view so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Let's see here. So we got zeroed out. We're going to add 150 grams of part A. Let's stir this guy up. So what we're doing though, we're going to have to wait until like literally the end of the working time. I want this stuff to be thick. 
So um, typically I pour, like if I'm just trying to keep colors separated, I'll pour, right now it's like 82 degrees in the shop. Um, Alumilite clear slow set and every resin is going to be different but and, and temperatures and all these things change stuff. But for what I've been doing, I usually pour um, for color swirl stuff at like 115 right now. And so I think, and when I did my, I've already done some testing and I didn't really get very good results. Um, I did these the last couple of days and they're underwhelming to say the least. I did do some other ones where I got some decent results about a year ago. So I think what I'm gonna do is we're gonna try and like really extend. <laughs> we're, we're gonna wait until like, so I did 130 and 140, I wanna say. I waited till 130 and 140 degrees and that didn't really work it was still it still wasn't like super thick so we're gonna wait till like 150 or so i think and we're gonna see what happens um, now again we're really pushing the limits here because there we may get we may run into the point where it's you know air bubbles may get introduced even like we're putting it in the pressure pot too late basically but let's just do a little bit of experimenting so let's wait till 150, see what happens. And what I'm gonna do is I have this stuff, it's like a red mesh, some sort of a, like an HDPE, LDPE material, some sort of polyethylene. Um, and and like, a, like garlic or something came in this from the grocery store. I put a couple little tabs on so I can hold it. Basically, you're just gonna keep this stuff down in the mold, pour the resin in, and then we're gonna kind of slowly pull it through and hopefully we will leave kind of a diamondy pattern in there that's that's the gist and we're not actually even using this mold that was just an example we got to get our, our powder in so we're going to do a drop of i'm sitting here talking not even paying attention whoa we'll put one drop of ocean blue dye just mix that in real quick and then we're doing we're going to try three quarter teaspoon Oop, dropped a little bit of the paradise blue. I like to just kind of spread it out a little bit. It seems to seems to mix in a little bit better usually. Some powders and I don't know. Some sometimes your mica powder is a little bit clumpy, so it, it helps to kind of break that up to begin with. I find, and then some some formulas, some some varieties, some uh, you know colors, are just clumpy. Um, the um, the interference colors, because they're almost like like a powdered sugar type, very thin. They get pretty clumpy. The micro pearl is very clumpy. Again, kind of like powdered sugar. So just just to warn you, some sometimes you got to be, and if it's something where you, you you don't really have a lot of time, working time or something like that, whatever you're doing, and you're using one of those clumpy things that tend to clump, I would actually recommend just mix it into the part A before you even add the part B to the, to the mix. Um, that'll give you unlimited time to get all the all the powder mixed in, and you don't have to worry about trying to like whip it, you know. And it not really working with you when you don't really have a lot of time. All right, so we're at 116 right now. We got a ways to go. <laughs> we're gonna really push the limits here. We're at 130 right now, and I mean it's still. It sounds like it, I'm like getting kind of crazy, but it's still very liquid, you know. So we're gonna try and push it to 150. All right, so now I need to get my pressure pot ready <laughs> because we're gonna have to slam it in there as fast as we can. All right, and so at this point, let's get our, let's get our mold ready. Let's get this thing set up because we're getting close. So I'm just gonna pour the resin in there. Now it's getting thick. Let's see where we're at. 140.
getting pretty thick. I think what I'm going to do is we're going to pour it in here now. And I'm going to take the temperature of it sitting in the, in the mold. Okay. 143. Let's just wait a little bit. If you want to, to kind of see what, what you're working with a little bit, you can kind of take uh, pops your, your mixing stick. I already threw mine away, but just to see, I'm, I'm also showing you guys, you know, what is the viscosity? It's still fine. I mean, it, it's still open. 147. We're getting close, guys. <laughs> and probably not a bad idea to put like, you know, something down because we're just going to have to kind of pull this thing out and then just stick it somewhere so that I can get it in the in the pressure pot. 148. It's probably a little bit hotter than that in the middle. Let's see what we're looking like. I mean, it's still liquid, you know. It's pretty clumpy. 150. All right. I'm going to kind of do this sort of carefully, kind of slowly. Oh, we lost our tape. Shoot. So you can see trails going. Oh, no. I think we lost it. It didn't work. Mm, I don't think that worked too well, guys. I'm going to toss it in the pressure pot. I think, I think that was a big failure. Forgot about the tape. Okay, so what I learned from that, I learned a lesson right there. I really think that you need a fairly rigid material. We're just going to toss this. I really think that you're better off having something that is like metal, basically, rigid. Sticking my fingers in the, the resin. So let's not go with the loofah because I don't really think that that's going to do much. Let's try to get a win today because I've, I've been doing stuff with flimsy material. Like that's the third test that didn't really go very well. All right, so let's try flipping the script a little bit. Let's go with this metal material. Um, I don't know that I have anything else that's, that's really rigid um, offhand that I can think of in the shop right now. Um, and we'll have to try and like, like, you know, if, if you guys, I'm not sure about that, that stuff that Ray's got, if it's, if it's like rigid, then that probably that's going to be a pretty awesome way to go. Um, there may be ways to, here's another thought that I have. So this stuff is not very rigid, but if we put it on like a, a metal frame that fit inside the, the mold and maybe had handles and you just pull it straight out, um, that might be a way to go. I, I don't know. Um, the problem that I have is you're kind of, you know, pulling this thing out and it's not, it's just, it's tough. So again, we're, we're just doing experiments here and this, that's the whole point of the, you know, what we're doing today. Um, and, and hopefully, you know, with you guys seeing, even if we fail at these things, hopefully you guys won't make that mistake. And then also maybe you, you know, you'll, you'll come up with a better way to do it than I could even think of. So let's see here. It is rigid. Nice. Okay, so let's. Uh, I need to cut this to the right size first. So let's see here. So I'm gonna get my sharpie out. Let me let me switch to the other view real quick. Get that one, and I'll show you what I'm doing here. So I'm just gonna get a sharpie out. Didn't didn't think about that tape being sitting down there in the resin kind of just using I, I, the idea was I kind of wanted to just use it so that I could get my fingers on there but it didn't work out so so let's see here we're gonna right there and we need to kind of cut probably in the middle of this one all right so I'm just gonna go grab a little cutty thing that can cut that. I have some tin snips somewhere. Ah, there they are. 
don't know how good they are, but. So I'm just gonna cut along, cut, here we go. And again, I want it long enough to, to where it's kind of sticking out of the mold so I can get my fingers on it. Okay, just double check this, yeah. Okay, so we want to be right about there. I'm going to come in the other way, make sure I'm on the same line. Okay, so I think I'm gonna kind of bend this so that it's totally flat in the mold. Let's see here. Like that, and then actually probably like this. A little bit more. And get this kind of flat here. There we go. So that ought to fit pretty well in our mold. Got enough to grab onto there. Uh, one thing, so this, I don't know what's on this. It's kind of sticky. That may be problematic. I don't know. I'm going to take a little bit of acetone. Try and kind of wipe off some of this stuff. I don't know. It's just been kind of sitting in the shop. So I'm just going to take a little bit of acetone, try and remove anything that might be kind of nasty in there on the surface. I don't know if it's really going to affect anything or not, but felt a little bit sticky. All right. Kind of shredded that paper towel. So I'm going to blow this piece of metal off. <clears throat> Okay, perfect fit. Got another mold already in the oven. So let's see here, what else? Let's see, I'm just gonna randomly pick someone. Let's see. Um, how about Ray? Ray's gonna send me something. So why don't you pick a color, Ray? Like I said, I, I really don't know, you know, any color, any type of color, it doesn't really matter. Um, I don't know if the, the opaque stuff is going to work or not, but, you know, there's also nothing saying that it really won't. The only reason I kind of initially went with a, a pearly color is they tend to, you know, that, that light reflects and refracts out of it a little bit different, so... You know, it may it may create a little bit better pattern. That that was just my initial thought, but I you know really, I have no clue. <laughs> I have no clue. So do you want um, a, a pearl purple, or do you want to try like a a dye mix again? So I would actually say, you know, I know that the 150 degrees seems kind of crazy, but I would actually say that worked pretty darn good. Um, I think if my pattern apparatus wasn't falling apart on me, I think we might have gotten decent results with that. Okay, so uh, we got... Let's see, I don't have any other, all I have, I have Reflex Violet and Pearl X. I got, and then all the, you know, Plum Crazy, Violet, Midnight Purple. 
I guess that's it. Doug Crazy. Good choice. There it is. All right, we got a little bit of Doug Crazy going on here. <clears throat> Don't need our tape anymore. That didn't <laughs> that didn't pan out too well. All right, so let's get some gloves. Get the notebook. Okay. And let's write some notes here. So number two. This will have to be the last one today, unfortunately. I'm kind of bummed that I screwed that, the pulling that stuff out. <clears throat> now, here, here's another thought, guys. Um, so you saw how that looked, and it just seemed like it was a big sheet of stuff. And I don't know, you know, maybe I'm going about this the wrong way. Maybe we don't want it as thick as I think it, uh, it should be. So, you know, I don't know. <laughs> This is one of those things that it really is going to take a lot of experimenting to, to and, and it may be one of those things that there's there's really no right answer that works 100% of the time either. I, I don't know, you know. All right, so we're using the metal, and that stuff, that's about a quarter inch, I'd say, metal quarter inch mesh. I'm Okay, I'm going to measure it. <laughs> a lot of times I... When I wing measurements, a lot of times I don't get it right. Yeah, quarter inch. Quarter inch. This time I was right. <clears throat> um, now, another thing, uh, the, the stuff that I used to get these guys... It was kind of like, you know, a flat, a piece of, uh, I don't know, it was like some sort of a plastic type thing with just like, like, it's almost like you hole punched it, basically. Um, that's how I got these. And so this has, you know, there's less material, uh, you know, in a sense. So I don't know if that has something to do with it too. Who knows? It's really weird though, because I don't know, I, I got pretty good results the first two times I tried this and I have yet to get decent results since. So I don't know, I don't know what I was doing. Okay, so let's see, metal mesh, we're gonna do 300 grams, 150 times two, we're gonna use plum crazy. Uh, let's, let's try a half teaspoon on this one, just see how that looks. And we'll put a little bit of purple dye in there too. Okay. All right, here we go. Let's see. Get our part A. I'm gonna switch to the other view for you guys. Okay, zeroed the scale out. I'm gonna get my pressure pot ready. All right, so we're mixing this stuff up. We're gonna add a little bit of purple dye, a little bit of plum crazy, and then we're gonna wait till this stuff is burning hot. <laughs> All right, so we got our resin mixed up. Add a little bit of purple dye, just a drop. And then half, we're gonna do half teaspoon of Plum Crazy, Doug Crazy, in honor of Doug. Doug just got a stabilizing chamber. Think about that. He's gonna be unstoppable now. Jeez. <clears throat> Fixing a dryer, oh man, that doesn't sound very fun. Shop time does though. One, so this is a quarter teaspoon, just, just in case anybody was not sure what I was doing here. 
quarter teaspoon measuring spoon, two scoops, All right, get our stuff put away here. Start mixing this guy up. All right, now we'll go, let's let's just shoot for again for, for 150. We really haven't gotten a good test at 150 yet. Another one really just kind of failed because of user error mostly. <laughs> so let's try 150 with this metal mesh stuff. Pretty thick, pretty thick. All right, so I'm gonna pull my mold out. <clears throat> we're at 145, I'm gonna put the, mold, the, the thingy in here. I think we're gonna pour the resin in now. Definitely warm. Okay. And then let's see here, where are we at? 147. Probably 150, 149. Yeah, we're pretty close, I think, so. I'm going to just try to slowly pull this up and through. All right, and then I'm just going to put it into the pressure pot. I can definitely see there's some lines in there. I don't think that I could have really showed you guys. There definitely do look like we might have gotten some lines that time. So I'm, I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I think we might have gotten a winner on this one. I don't think it's going to really look like snake skin, you know, but I think we might have gotten some patterning going on. All right, so we got some results, and surprisingly, the first batch, I, I totally botched that, the pulling the thing out, but it, I actually got some interesting patterns. There's... Uh, it's it's really weird how this works. I actually I want to give that that material another shot, something a little longer that I don't have tape that's going to fall off. Uh, but we also got some patterns in the purple ones. Now I want to make sure that everybody understands that you know this was just an experiment, a thought, an idea that I had in my head. I I do not know how to get you know results with this. Um, I'm just trying things out, and I wanted to share the idea, the thought. Um, and, and I do think there's something to this. And I, I was thinking that, you know, the more people that know about this, that maybe it's on their brain, they're thinking about it, uh, might have, you know, better ideas than I can come up with, or, you know, you guys can get in your shop and experiment with it and maybe get some results. So if you have any thoughts or ideas, or if you know the secret, uh, definitely let us know down in the comments if you want to share. Uh, that's, that's what this is all about. I'm hoping that it'll at least bare minimum, you know, you may not want to use this exactly the way that I was doing it for the reasons, you know, for the, for the outcome that I was looking for. But it may give you an idea knowing that you can kind of create some patterning in blanks. Maybe it's, there's something that you had planned and it's, you know, it'll help you, uh, you know, get that, that look that you want in your blanks. Who knows? But the more people that are, you know, looking at this, trying, you know, thinking about it, the better off I think we all are. So uh, again, this was a uh, Patreon live Q&A hangout. We do this every first Friday of the month. Uh, it's just for patrons, and the first half is a demo, a resin casting something that I do. I always break that out of the, you know, edit it out, and then post it public on, on YouTube. And then the second half is just a Q&A hangout. It's, it's a time that I can kind of just dedicate to focusing on the chat 
And if people have any resin casting questions, I can answer them. So if you'd like to have access to the live Q&A hangouts, the first Fridays, uh, and help support the show as well, uh, do so over on patreon.com slash envywoodworks. We'd love to have you join the Patreon family. So I guess that's about it. Hopefully this will give you guys an idea or two or some thoughts to think about in your resin casting shop. And I guess until next time, guys, thanks for watching this video and happy casting.